Welcome to part two of my Tesla Model Y review. In the first one, I detailed my top 10 reasons as to why it is the best electric SUV right now in Australia. But this video is gonna be my top 10 reasons. Well, it's maybe not so much. Wait, wait, what are you, what are you doing Tesla fan? Don't dislike this video because I'm criticizing Tesla. No, hear me out. Remember, not every car is perfect. Know that this is obviously my car. I've got a Tesla Powerwall too. I own Tesla shares and I believe in their mission, but nonetheless, yeah, look, there are things that can be improved. And so I can't be just one out of hundreds of thousands, in fact, millions who own Teslas who have a particular issue with them. So hang with me as we're gonna detail the top 10 reasons, well, things could be improved. All right, first up, the wheels. These 19 inch Gemini wheels are not the prettiest, but look, each to their own, sure. But what I don't like and many owners don't like is the fact that the aluminum alloy actually sticks out a bit. And rim rash is a real thing in these cars. So maybe next time Tesla, choose better tires. The second thing I'd like to see improved in the Tesla Model Y is a kick opening or a proximity sensor for the tailgate. This is available right now on a lot of other cars, particularly like the Kia EV6 and a lot more. And at uh, this price point, it should absolutely be standard. Something I didn't purposely talk about in the last video was ride and handling in the Tesla Model Y. The suspension is a little firm and it's been criticized by motoring journalists who know a lot more about cars than I do, just how bad it is. They have supposedly updated it now in the 2023 model, so watch out for that. It's gonna be a bit softer and more compliant, but I think between the type of tires that are on this car, the springs, the multi-link suspension they're using, is just a bit rough. So if you go over a pothole or a bump, it knocks and it shudders through the car and you feel it and I kind of describe it as being firm, which for an SUV is a bit weird. Yeah, it should be just a nice sort of comfortable drive and for the most part, like on smooth roads like this, it is, it, it is a lovely experience, but yeah, just uh, there's one criticism worth noting. By the way, before we go any further, did you know you can actually rent this Tesla Model Y on ev.com.au? If you've done a test drive, you'll know that it's only about 30 minutes and you're wondering, is it gonna fit in my lifestyle? What about charging at home, getting to work, just living with a Tesla? Well, maybe give mine a rental and yeah, save yourself some money by using the link down below. Number four, and that is noise levels. This is one of the loudest cars I've actually reviewed on the channel and sure, on paper, it doesn't look like a lot, but it actually is. And I think primarily it's because they haven't included a boot cover. There's a bit of noise coming from the tires. Wheel arches could be improved. There's no wind noise safe from the A-pillar or from the glass roof, which is great. But just all in all, it it's just not up to the same quality as even a modern Hyundai or a modern Kia. Yeah, if you wanna know the best one, check up here. And whilst you're thinking about it, subscribe to the channel because it really helps the channel. And yeah, your support means a lot to me. Number five is the glass roof. It's awesome and all, don't get me wrong, but it doesn't actually have an integrated blind system like you see in a lot of other car makers. So again, if you've got to compete with the likes of the Ionic 5, you need to have a motorized blind system. And fun fact, there's a lot of aftermarket accessories for this, so it just says a lot, doesn't it? Number six is quality fit and finish. Yeah, these, these caps, well, they're from a BMW actually. <laughs> to, to be honest, seriously, they're not that bad in this car and they're a lot better than they used to be. However, check out this carpet. This is rubbing in some frequently uh, touched areas and it's just not indicative of good quality, to be honest. The way they've joined these two carpets together is horrendous, let's face it. The seats, they're vinyl, it's okay. It's not really standing well to the test of time. Cleaning with uh, unscented baby wipes, by the way, and it cleans up pretty nicely. But nonetheless, they should be ventilated. They are heated, but they should be ventilated at this price point. And rattles, squeaks, and stuff like that. I've had Tesla fix the tailgate that was rattling, and it still kind of does. But at least they didn't charge me for that and the service experience wasn't, wasn't that bad, it actually was pretty good. On the passenger side somewhere, I think it's around the seat belt or something like that. 
Uh, and oh, the HVAC system. Let me illustrate by using this oven rack and streamers. And don't get me wrong, it's great having profiles that remembers where you want the airflow and your temperature, but it doesn't make for naught if it can't hit your face or your head where I want it and maybe where you want it. So let me show you. Right now, if I've got it on auto, I guarantee it's not gonna get anywhere near close. So you know what I have to do? I've gotta rack it up to 10. 10 for goodness sake, so let's do that. Now we'll shift it over to the left. Absolutely missing me here. To the right, same situation. It's blown towards the window, which is what I expected to do anyway. Bring it back to center, and it's hitting me on the chin and chest. Let me just move the rack over here. And yeah, it's, it's barely even coming over the steering wheel. And this is the issue I had. Like I took it to service. They said there's nothing wrong with it. It's as per factory fit. And their suggestion was change your seating position, change your steering wheel. And I say, no, you change the bloody air conditioning because, you know, in a hot day, this glass roof isn't always the best. And, uh, you know, if you're a hot bud like me, you want the air on your face and on your head. And this doesn't come anywhere near it. Now, this is gonna seem a bit picky, but I think it's a fair criticism. Supercharging. In the Tesla Model Y with the lithium ion phosphate batteries, it seems to be limited up to about 170 kilowatts, which is decent, but it's definitely not the fastest. So if you want the fastest, look to the Ionic 5, Kia EV6. They have 800 volt architecture and go from 10 to 80% in as little as 18 minutes. This session right now, if I was to do the same sort of charge, it's gonna take me probably about oh, 25 to 30 minutes at least. So if you wanna be getting on the road as soon as possible, this one is not gonna be ticking any boxes for you. Number eight is enhanced autopilot and full self-driving. And I know I'm gonna upset a lot of people with this one because, well, I respectively disagree that they're actually good. We had in Australia for one month a trial and we were able to actually um, see what it was like with enhanced autopilot and I gotta tell you, I was not impressed. The way it exited um, on slip lanes was dangerous. Summon was a cute little gimmick that almost actually uh, damaged my car. And self-parking was mediocre at best. In fact, my, well, I won't say what brand it was, but his auto park was a hell of a lot better than Tesla Autopilot. And we're talking technology that's, well, five plus years ago. Right now in Australia, I believe the build, the stack, the information, the, you know, behind the scenes, is almost four years old and we are way behind on our american counterparts so elon if you're watching this you need to bring full self-driving beta like we're seeing in america to australia because right now only if you want your car to change lanes for you is the only reason i would recommend you get just enhanced auto park otherwise save your money and wait until elon musk actually says i'm going to be deploying it to australia in beta form or final form whatever that might be in my previous video i waxed lyrical about how awesome all the software in the car is like autopilot which is brilliant but i can tell you auto high beams is garbage it constantly flashes and dazzles other drivers and for a system that's using cameras it, it, it's far inferior than most other cars out there that have a purpose-built system in it. Number nine is all about the infotainment system, which in my last video, the review of it, all the positives, was about how awesome it is. But conversely, there's a negative side to it. And that is everything, and I mean basically everything is controlled through it. And Elon Musk is all about first principles, which basically means to rethink things and break it down to its most fundamental and don't just keep adding and adding and well to get into glove box you've got to be doing two button presses to open the damn thing if you're doing a software update you can't get into it whatsoever so plan ahead it's really just a basic thing but yeah it's uh, frustrating and something that could be improved just well with one little button 
and you know I'm going to say it, Android Auto and Apple CarPlay, which should be somehow implemented in these cars wirelessly. And I know the comments already, oh they suck Chris, they're horrendous. But you know what is what does suck? The voice assistant in this car and the limited apps that are actually available in it. You got a favorite podcast app to listen to whatever you listen to, yeah it's not going to be in this car, you've got to go through Spotify or that's basically it and that's a horrendous experience. If you want to have uh, Audible for instance, no it's not in here and again it's going to be a bad experience. If you want your favorite navigation app, Waze or Apple Maps, you're not going to get in this car. So I don't know how Tesla can implement this, but there's heaps of screen real estate here for them to play with. It's got everything it needs to actually do so. So it's got Wi-Fi, it's got Bluetooth and it can implement it. But to have to work around that and effectively use just Bluetooth on your phone to listen to something that you want to is so circa 1990. We're in 2023 now and this is a state-of-the-art car but when it comes to infotainment and listening to stuff this is way inferior product. And last but not least at number 10 is its warranty. Sure battery and drivetrain is about oh, eight years or 160,000 kilometers great good sort of but then most everything else is just four years or 80,000 kilometers. The infotainment screen only two years or 40,000 kilometers. Compared to MG, Kia and Hyundai that have eight year unlimited warranties or Polestar and Volvo that are five year also unlimited, this warranty is complete and utter garbage and needs to be dramatically improved. So there's my laundry list of things I'd like to see improved on the next generation of Tesla Model Y. Now to be clear, first up, Tesla's always iterating and improving. So the things I've talked about in this video could be resolved by the time you get them. They don't do major refreshes once per year. If they've got something better, they'll actually improve it. And to also know that I still love this car. I'll probably buy another one again. But whilst it's one of the best electric vehicles in Australia, it's not the best one. If I could have the perfect car, it would look like this. Hyundai Ioniq 5 with Tesla Autopilot. That would be the best car. So if you want to find out more about it, click on this video over here where I review the latest Ioniq 5 and find out why, yeah, it's arguably actually probably the best electric car to buy right now. If you want to support the channel either through Patreon membership or YouTube membership, please follow the links down below and otherwise you'll be good and you'll be green.